the worst behind the back dribble habits that you can have. Let's talk about the five big ones. These are things I commonly see with beginner players, but also some of them with advanced players. One could make the dribble illegal. One is gonna make it so it's not effective in games. One could get the ball stolen. One will keep you from being able to get past defenders. And one could make it so you just flat out lose the basketball and turn it over. All five things are things we're not looking to do. Of course, I'm gonna show you how to fix all these in this video. Coach Jesse Minch with Get Handles Basketball. We train harder and smarter so you can play like the pros. If that's something you're looking to do, subscribe and click that bell icon to catch the newest videos. To start off, the first thing I see with a lot of players that keeps their behind the back from being effective is the speed of the dribble. So a lot of times they'll just really softly push the basketball behind their back. Big problem with that is it automatically makes it so you kind of have to look down for the basketball. It doesn't really put the basketball in a position where you can get it with the other hand. So one big thing that players have to work on if you're, if you're behind the back's not effective is just getting some extra power into that dribble. At the end of this video, I'm gonna link you to another YouTube video that'll give you drills to help you develop that power in the behind the back specifically. But just that alone, just focusing on that key of putting some power on the dribble is gonna make it so that dribble's quicker and more effective in game situations, but more importantly, so you don't have to look down for a long time. Now, on the wrap behind the back where you're wrapping it forward, even if you watch the best NBA players, typically they are going to look down because you're kind of putting the basketball in front of you a little more and you have to locate it quick. That's fine, but don't look down for a really long time, right? Still get some snap on the dribble so it gets over here more quickly, and then as soon as you locate it, get your eyes back up on the court. That's gonna allow you to see what's happening on the court and react to game situations a lot more effectively. If those tips help, click that like button. Next big problem is a major one that can make the dribble illegal, especially on the wrap behind the back. I'll see a lot of players when they do this dribble though, even the regular behind the back, the more the flat back one, they'll have their hand come under the basketball and they'll scoop it across and drop the basketball down. And on the wrap behind the back, they'll have their hand come pretty much do the same thing, but usually it'll happen later. Their hand will be more on the side, and then as they go here, they'll kind of roll it forward like that. At the end of the video, I'll link you to another YouTube video I have that talks about what a carry is and what it isn't, but the main point is to make sure your hand is more than halfway on top of the basketball, that whole motion. A couple tips I can give you is to think about it as just being more like a regular crossover. I think a lot of times players think about the behind the back dribble as almost being like a behind the back pass and then dropping it. Still think about it as being the same motion, the only difference is you're going behind the back with that same exact motion. On the wrap, the only thing you're really adding is bringing your arm across a little bit further and then at the last second kind of curling your wrists and your fingers in like this. Okay, and that'll help roll the ball forward. Make sure that setup dribble, you get some good pop on it, because that'll give you the air time you need to do that dribble without carrying. If it's a soft dribble, now you feel like you have to scoop it up to even go into that behind the back. The next few issues are gonna be a little bit more of a problem in game situations. This one is about your stance and your footwork. So a lot of times when I see players do behind the back, the big one that's a big problem is I'll see they'll kind of do like this, they'll kind of like hop their legs forward and do this with their body. You're not in a very good position to move anywhere on the court when you're doing that, right? At the end of the day, your, your goal on the court is obviously to protect the basketball, so the behind the back does achieve that, but you wanna be able to create, right? You wanna be able to get someone on the court, break ankles, get past defenders, create space for shots, right? If you're in this position, you're not in a very good position to do any of that. The other thing I see with a lot of players is a lot of times they'll have their feet super narrow and it doesn't really give them much of a position to move. Typically, I try to get players in about shoulder width stance, maybe slightly wider or slightly narrower. It just depends on the game situation and the moving combo you're doing. But you wanna stop with that same sort of emotion if you're gonna do that stop behind the back. But think about sitting into a chair and then crossing over under your butt, not doing this to get the crossover off. And really, if you think about it and look at it, you're not achieving anything extra by doing this. I mean, you don't get any extra pathway to get the dribble off. Key tip I can give you is when you're doing your more stationary flat back one, slap the same side butt. That'll put the basketball so it releases every time right under your legs and it should bounce right in between your legs right here. So you don't have to worry about it hitting you. If you're doing more of the wrap, slap the opposite side butt. Okay, left hand to right side. That should release the ball consistently where you want it. This next tip is one that can help even advanced players take their behind the back next level, but it'll certainly help a lot of beginners. And it's the focus on the receiving hand, the second hand. When I go behind the back, I don't want this hand way out here, because before we talked about how you have to kind of look down to see where the dribble is to get control over it and 
Now my vision's not on the court, so I can't really react to what's happening, right? So if I get this hand down low, waiting down low here, so that way I can feel the basketball, I don't have to look at it whatsoever, right? I know exactly where it's ending up because I got this hand down low and I can get that feel earlier down here. If I have it, wait for it to come up here, there's all this extra air time where if maybe it hits a dead spot or a stone or the basketball is flatter or more inflated than what I expected it to be, it won't end up right where I want it to be in this hand. And because of that, now I have to look down. You're naturally gonna wanna look down and now you're not gonna see what's happening on the court. But the other benefit of this for especially like more advanced players that you know they know they can pop it and leave this hand high and maybe you're like, okay, I can do that, that's no problem. I'm with you on that, but here's an advantage you get by getting this hand lower. If my hand is on the basketball down here versus waiting for it to get up here, I can make a move quicker from down here. If my defender cuts me off, I can do this crossover way down here if I need to, right? If I'm up here, now I only have the option to do the crossover when the basketball finally hits my hand up here. But if I catch it down here, I have the option to do it down here, up here, right? All those things become open and available to me when I wouldn't normally have that option if I'm waiting up here. There is one exception to this though, which would be the wrap behind the back where you really need to roll the ball forward a little bit more so you can cover some ground. Fifth worst habit, and I'm gonna link you to the YouTube video with the uh, drills that you can do to master the behind the back, become much more effective with it. And it's to do the behind the back in the wrong situation. So a good rule of thumb for this is you don't really wanna do the behind the back unless you're less than an arm's distance away from a defender. If I'm back here, like do, number one, doing the behind the back is kind of pointless. And if I'm trying to do like a wrap behind the back where I'm exposing the basketball, that's giving them a really good opportunity to steal it, right? And if you're just pulling off a bunch of behind the backs really far from your defender, it just looks like you're showing off and your coach might put you on the bench. But if I do the behind the back when I'm close to him, now it serves a purpose because it's protecting the basketball. And if I do that same wrap behind the back, it actually gives me an advantage as long as I'm moving my foot here with it so now I have protection and they can't get to it. So that's a pretty big swing between having a move that beats a defender nasty and makes them look bad versus turning the ball over. Here's the YouTube video with the drills to master the behind the back and then here's the video that explains what a carry is and what it isn't. If you want to see five of the worst dribbling habits period, check out this video. Click that like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon to catch the newest videos.